I welcome you to this another wonderful episode of Be Sex Wise as Parents. Whether we like it or not, I always say that your kids are your fault. Bad driving, bad parenting. Bad attitude, bad parenting. Whatever you see in the life of your children, it's better you take responsibility because they came to this world blank. If it was to start to their minds, they play back to life. When I have seen a lot of adults that are mannerless, they don't have courtesy, they don't respect elders. Serious attitude problem is all about parenting. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Please share, share with your friends, tag your friends. We're going to have a powerful time this evening. It's going to be very, very deep and very insightful. Whether we are conscious of it or not, our parenting, Parenting is a skill. You have to develop a skill. Let me put it that way. Parenting is a skill that has to be developed. Nobody is born a good parent. As a matter of fact, you know, I was reading a book maybe about 30 or 40 years ago on um, how to parent. And um, the man said there's no perfect parent anywhere. By the time you start having your children, you will also know that you are not a perfect parent. You know, I know so many kids are out there blaming their father, blaming their mother for the way they were raised, for things they did, for the things they did not do. But don't worry, <laughs> by the time your kids to have grown up, you will, they will look back and remember the things that was not done by you, the things you did not do, the things you did not say. You know, you will find out that parenting is a lot of, it's a lot of work, and it is hard work, and it's not for cowards. But one thing I want to bring out this evening is for you to know that you cannot be a baby, have a baby, your husband is a baby, then you give back to a baby. Somebody has to be matured. So sex wise parenting today, I'm going to be intentional about maturity that we display to our children. Emotionally matured parents. But I'm going to start from the odd to the positive. The immatured emotionally parents. Parents that are not matured emotionally. What are the dynamics of their lives? What do they do? What do those the children see? How do they manage their lives? Has not been much. Oh, welcome everyone. I appreciate you for joining. Join, join, join. Invite your friends, tell your neighbor. Thank you, thank you for joining. I'm going to let you have this at the back of your mind today. In this, my book, Love Not to Fathers, I've been able to reach out to thousands of people. I think this is the second edition and the second print and it's finished already. It's no more. I don't even have it in stock. This is an old one that I'm using to share with us here. Where we have emotionally immature parents we raise children that are chaotic. We raise children that have issues. They, they can be very intelligent. They can go to Harvard. They can be doctors. They can be engineers. They can be pastors, they can be uh, bankers, whatever vocation they, they choose, whatever vocation they choose, if they are not emotionally matured, because they are raised by emotionally immature parents, it shows up. It may not show up in their academics, it may not show up in their vocation, some actually showed up in their vocation. I've seen people that will say, ah, that surgeon is very rude, he's nasty. He has attitude problem. That doctor does not even have courtesy. You know, you're wondering, ah, this guy went to medical school. Everybody saying, mommy doctor, daddy doctor. And at the end of the day, they are telling you that they, when your children are not well brought up emotionally, you know, you have manner issue, you have attitude problem, you're not comport, you're not composed. There's no comportment. You are not comported. You just scatter everywhere a little, you know, button that is pushed anger erupts and all of that and if you are not careful you will just have emotionally red children so we're looking at the types of parents that are not emotionally matured raising their children what do we see how do we know that parent this mother this dad is not matured emotionally don't forget you cannot give what you don't have i've said it before and i'm saying it again if you are going to give me a clue i'll look at the one you're wearing i've changed my slogan I'm going to check your wardrobe. If you do not borrow that clothes to party, people borrow clothes to party. I apologize for coming in a little bit late. The network was acting up, and I don't want 
any glitches that's why i went back and i'm back again share with your friends tell your friends that we're here tonight is going to be powerful this evening we're going to have a very very good time a time of insight knowledge understanding now like i said thank you for watching thank you for coming in to watch and listen to this i said something i said in this in this my book love note to fathers i actually it was the topic was dealing with father's issue but i'm not going to concentrate on the fathers today i'm going to make it broad so we're talking about parenting sex wise parents as a wise parent you cannot give what you don't have i'm intentionally repeating that you have to be able to be matured emotionally to give out stability mental emotional psychological stability to your children if that is not in picture then we're going to have problems i've seen immature men and women you see them blasting out on various various platforms on social media and sometimes you shake your head sometimes you cry for some people you know recently somebody just observed that her girlfriend had got pregnant and she aborted the pregnancy and he actually killed the girl it was in the news and the question is so what if you really love your girlfriend and you want to keep the relationship and the first abortion came up you could still go on and uh, you know make up the relationship and the girl gets pregnant again so is it death that remains and what did he do he actually <laughs> burnt the house with the girl living inside it shows how immature people can be but you cannot blame that man i'm not saying you should, you should not take responsibility everybody has the right to <laughs> to take responsibility for the lives they're living basically you cannot tell me that um because your parents didn't train you well now you went to steal and you are caught you are going to face the music and dance to the lyrics so it is not about who parented you the point is you can work on yourself but because we are dealing with you know the type of emotionally immature parents that's why we are dealing with this and please i want you to listen to me carefully if you are raising kids that are not matured we are adding problems society you are raising kids that are not you are raising children that are not emotionally matured what you are doing to yourself you are torturing your future you are messing up with your destiny because at the end of the day when i say destiny we're going to be accountable to god for the way we raise our children we are not raising children for ourselves alone you, are, you know in my, the tenet of my faith the bible says that children are god's heritage now one thing you know about parents that are raising emotionally immature children is that those children have a security problem in this book love note to fathers we talked about the symptoms of an emotion, emotionally immature dad and mom put it this way there's so many things we see in them number one they are not matured the children are not mature because they are not secure they are not matured you know one thing that happens to us as parents when we raise our children in unhealthy emotional when i say healthy emotionally healthy environment it stabilizes the child the self-worth is validated he can stand up and stand tall and be firm and be nice the child will learn to say yes and no when to say no the child will say no when to say yes the child will say yes with courtesy not in a, an ill-mannered way because we, we have so you know, some adults where you see them they are not they are not mannered they don't know how to you know to genuflex they don't know how to respect elders they don't know how to say sir they don't have to say ma now what we do as parents especially when we feel we are not meeting up to the standard is to send them to school where they will teach them morals in a way you see a lot of Christian school being flooded by parents. And I noticed something that parents, you know, I remember, I remember somebody was saying, one of the proprietors, you know, that owns a private university in this country, I remember he made a statement. He said that his school is not a rehabilitation center because some, some parents actually sent them to such institutions because they wanted them to have a better life. A good moral standard you are joking the formative years of your children matters a lot and it is in your hand as parents 
the first few years of your child's life. You notice that when these kids get out of hand or probably left home without the, without the coffers of their parents, what do they do? They go wild. I had handled cases of mothers, fathers, coming to me and said, come, come, come. My, the, the principal, he's not the principal now, the lecturer of my daughter took my daughter's picture and sent it to me. And I did not buy those clothes for my daughter. Because our faith does not even allow you to be half naked, not to talk of be full naked. So, what happened is, as soon as they help you to wear your turtle neck at home, covered clothes at home, you know what they will do? When they are leaving the door or the gate of your house, they dump those ones in the bag, go out there to various boutiques and buy clothes that suits their dream and their vision and they go to school. That's why when, you, when they come back from school, some of you are not even sensitive. They are drenched in, in drugs. Some of them have been disvergent. Some of them are soaked in alcohol. Some are committed to smoking cannabis. And yet, you are saying, oh, my child is from a Christian home. I've given them faith. No. The reason why this will happen is when as parents you are not emotionally matured, your children will definitely lose it because of your Im Im immature emotional attitude or your, you not being matured emotionally, what you will notice is that when your children are not secured, they are looking for love in wrong places. They are looking for acceptance, validation, be people believing in them in wrong places. They need people out there to support them, to make them feel important because you are not emotionally matured in raising your children. Now, an emotionally immature parent will not give a healthy support for their children. When I'm talking about support system, let, let me put it this way. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for coming. Now, let me put it this way. It's so simple. You are not matured emotionally. Your child is not matured emotionally. When you dump that child to the world, the child begins to look for people that, people of like minds, people that would make him or her feel special, feel important, feel, feel intelligent. You know, let me, I, I, there's a case I handled. I'm not going to tell you the location because of, you know, social media. I went to preach in a particular state outside Nigeria. And um, the man owns, without no exaggeration, owns about 12 hospitals in that state. And he's a black man. It was Father's Day, so I was invited to come and preach at their program. And I used this book of mine, Love Note to Fathers, to teach. It was, you know. And one thing we do in the process of therapy, please, I want to digress again. If you are going through serious emotional problems, seek help. Do therapy. Don't think it will go. Emotional wounds are treated intentionally. Physical wounds are treated intentionally. Any form of pain, wound, must be treated intentionally or else what you don't treat will decay. You might end up amputating your leg, your hand, because there was negligence in the area of treatment. So you have to be intentional about treating whatever wound that you have emotionally so he owns about he was a very rich man he owns hospitals he's a surgeon and all of that so i came for i went for the meeting and after preaching what we do when it comes to dealing with issues in one of the days i just okay let me just deal with some issues so we did healing of the father's wound 
And what we do when we do that is we allow you to belch, to speak your pain to a father figure. So I made them to pair, you know, in twos. I mean, when we do such meetings, it's always amazing. Uh, you see adults cry like babies or not. So when we did that, I, unfortunately for me, unfortunately for me, he paired with me. Elderly man, he was 60. Paired with me. And uh, what you have to do is to speak to your imaginary dad. Thinking that he's there, picturing him seated, telling him the things you would have told him 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago. And um, he started talking to me. And what he said was that, you know, I'm just relaying exactly what he said. Verbatim, no mixture of anything. Because he was releasing his wounds. He was opening up to the person that he's venting with. And he said, Dad, Dad, when I was in secondary school, in the whole of Nigeria, I was the best student. I had 15 scholarships to go to any part of the world. Please, follow me. I'm taking you somewhere. I don't have to finish it now. I'm not in a hurry. He said, Dad, when, they were, when I was bagging those awards, I wish you were there to just hug me, hold me, tell me to my face that you are proud of me. But Dad, you were not there. I didn't see you. I chose to go to that country like I told us. I'm not going to tell you where the man is because he's a very pronounced person in his vocation. So I'm not going to tell you where he lives or what, where you know his clinics are, his hospitals are. So just bear with me for the sake of people's image and all. Now, and one of the oaths we have in this profession is to keep people's confidentiality. We have an oath of confidentiality, so I'm not permitted to divulge any information you know that you're trusting me with let me put it that way so i so he said that i chose to go to that part of the world to read medicine i became a number one surgeon in that continent not only that my first year in school i got A's in all my subjects in medicine. Dad, I wish you were there. I'm talking about parents that, don't, that are not matured emotionally. They cannot give stability. They cannot give strength. They cannot give security to their children. I said it at the beginning of this program. You might be sent to Harvard. Your, my, your child might go, be, go to the best university best best of the best in the world if they are not emotionally matured there will be a surgeon that sleeps with every dictum and harry they are females there will be a surgeon that sleeps with their patients does what morally is said to be wrong because of their upbringing because they were raised by parents that are not emotionally matured Going back to the story of this man, he said that when we were doing our end of the year party and, you know, celebration, and I was being given all their words, Dad, I wish you were there to celebrate me, to love me. I'm repeating it the way it was said. It was only my mother I saw. After everybody has shaked my hands, hugged me, my proprietor, the school, authority, they put my picture everywhere, you know, celebrating me. I felt empty because you were not there to celebrate me. Now, I'm saying this to us today. For you to understand being sex-wise as parents, you have to understand the dynamics of what you are expecting if you are not emotionally matured, except to get help or seek help. Help is available. That is what you will expect. She said, so he said, it's only my mom I saw. And when I saw my mom, it wasn't as good as that you've been there. He said, despite all the celebration, 
hero worshiping me, telling me I'm the best, I'm the pride of the school. I go to a corner and I cry. Dad, I wish you were there to celebrate me. Dad, one of the days, I woke up and I had a wet dream. I didn't know what it was. Dad, I wish you were there to tell me that it is normal for a young man at my age to have wet dreams. I'm sure some parents don't even tell their kids that. I kept quiet because I was so ashamed to talk to anyone, not even my mom. Once in a while, my mom comes around, but it's, it would have been so good for you, Dad, to be with me and just tell me I'm the best of all the best. Dad, you were never there. Today, Dad, I have I've achieved in my vocation. I'm choosing my words intentionally. I don't want you to have an idea of who I was talking about, who I'm talking about. I've been the pride of any man in my vocation, in my field. But that, today, as I'm talking to you, I'm a sad man. I have 15 children for 8 different women. And as I'm talking to you now, Dad, there's no woman in my house. And he started crying. In the process of healing all these things that I'm talking about, we have tissue papers for people and, you know, Kleenex for people to, to wipe their tears. This man wept for, without any exaggeration, for nothing less than 20 minutes. And the tears was obvious because everybody heard him crying when we're healing the wounds. He said that today. Anybody could envy me. I have so much money in my account. But you know what? I'm a sad man. I'm not a happy man. Have you seen parents that are so immature and they are not sensitive to the needs of their kids? Now, let me put it this way. There's no price that is too high to pay. I'm telling you this and I'm saying it with all sense of responsibility. There's no price that is too high to pay. I'm paid to make sure you choose rightly for the singles. If I have another life to live, I will talk to the younger ones more. Because to learn by information is better. To learn by experience is better. Learning by information will save your soul of the stress of being an ignorant person. It will save your soul for the torture of not knowing what to do, not knowing how to live, not knowing how to survive. It will save your soul. If you are single, you are hearing me. Please share with the single ones. Some of us adults here, we, we are regretting already, we are in pain, we are tearful, we are crying, we are sh shouting, we are in our world. Can you just help me to tell one young man, one young woman, to do everything to be sure that the person you are going to live the rest of your life with is someone that you are sure that will be the father of your children, the great grandfather of your children, and will be a voice in your life to help you to raise a, a godly seed. Children that would make you proud mentally, emotionally, physically, psychologically, financially. Hmm. If you are married, please do everything to work on your relationship. Where two elephants fight, the grass does not suffer, some grass dies immediately. It depends on the length of the fight. You know, there's a word of wisdom that says, where two elephants fight, it's grass that suffers. No. Where two elephants fight, grass may not suffer, grass may die. I've seen children, you need to listen to some of the things that people tell me on a consistent basis. Today, one lady was talking to me. I jumped out of bed. I wish I could read it to you. For you to understand that I know what I'm saying. If you are not emotionally matured, 
you, you can produce a spermatozoa and not be a man. For the fact that you, you can, you, you, you wake up in the morning, you have erection, you have wet dreams, you, you, can, you can pregnant a woman, does not make you a man. Oh, at the end of the month, you have your menstrual period, you can lactate, you can be, you are, you are ovulating, does not make you a woman. Manhood, womanhood is serious maturity and it is hard, hard work. If you understand that, there's no price that is too high to pay to wait if you are single. If you are married, to work on your relationship. If you are married to a narcissist, it's a lost cause. Now, let me say this here. For the fact that you were attracted to a man or a woman that is dysfunctional, is a sign that you are also dysfunctional. Definitely yes. Take it to the back. And that's why when we do therapy, we do our clackings, we go deep into the foundation and the roots of where you are coming from. If you are coming from a home that is dysfunctional, just know that you are not okay. You have to be deliberate about your healing of your emotions. You have to be intentional about healing the wounds that is inflicted in your soul by being raised by parents that are not mature. So children are limited. Don't forget, you know, I, I, I used to put it this way. When you see someone that is, that is deformed, part of you is strong. That's why you don't find people that are deformed. Part of you is strong, part of you is weak. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying this for you to begin to feel bad and say, okay, where do I go from here, this, blah, blah, blah. You have to start working on yourself. You have to start changing. You have to start building your inner strength. You have to get an accountability person. You have to set yourself in for therapy. You have to do that. That's the only way out. Do you know, when you are raised by parents that are not matured emotionally, they don't respect your feelings. I said it in one of my episodes. It is when you are, when I started traveling out, I would hear children say, Mom, Dad, you are hurting my feelings. An African child, nobody expects you to have feelings. By the time you are saying, Daddy, Mommy, you are hurting my feelings, they are giving you a dirty slap because they don't expect you to have feelings. Nobody expects you to feel somehow. So what is known by your dysfunctionality is that your feelings is numbed, shut down completely. Now, if you are raised by parents that are not emotionally matured, one thing is that they lack empathy. They just hit you say things to you, abuse you sexually. Oh my God, there's a case here that I need to, to bring up. Maybe next week. Her dad was sleeping with her. What happened was, when she was younger, the dad had a case in the prison. So the man went to the prison and um, he spent like maybe 12 years there about in the prison. And the girl was about 7 or 8 or 9. So by the time he came back, the girl has grown up. And become a fine girl. So, the father, maybe the father assumed that it was one girl in the house, but they were living together. The master is living with that, with that. The master is living with that daughter. She aborted multiple times for the dad, and the mother did not know. The mother did not know. When you are raised by parents that are not matured, there's a problem. No empathy, no sympathy, no emotional support. Now, let me say this. Have you been in a situation where which somebody lied against you? Maybe they came home and said you stole or you raped someone. Instead of your parent to stand up and say, no, I trust my daughter, I trust my son. When you were young, Nobody said anything. They actually believed you. They believed the lies that somebody told against you than believing in you. Your parents are not matured emotionally. Even if there's a suspicion, you should know your children. You should know what they can do and what they cannot do. 
when you are raised by parents that are not emotionally matured, they are not sensitive. They don't watch moves. They don't watch you. If you are fine, you are fine. If you are not fine, you are not fine. Who cares? And when you raise, when you are raised by parents like that, you know I'm seizing my breath. I felt like exposing something to you today, but maybe next next week. You know, by the grace of God. There's an information that just got to me, and it got to me. Actually, somebody had to tell me, Mommy, calm down. Don't get emotionally attached to your clients like that. Or, you know, there are some cases you don't have a choice, especially if you're a woman. I've cried this afternoon because of that episode, that situation. Hmm. When you look into life as a parent, can you just do me a favor? If you are not married, don't marry anyhow. Do compatibility assessment test. Do personality assessment test. Be sure you can live together for the rest of your life. Lives. And let me say this. If you notice a vice, don't rationalize for that person. You notice that this person maybe he smokes, he drinks. You've caught him multiple times with different girls. They are red flags. They are telling you, no, no, no. It takes a dysfunctional person to be married to someone. Thank you. Don't marry anyhow. It takes somebody that is dysfunctional to marry a man or a woman that is dysfunctional. Don't say you will change him. That's a bad dream. You are fantasizing. You are living in fool's paradise. People don't change. They modify their attitude. When you notice that, bring it to the table. Bring it to the table. Let's discuss it. Get somebody to be involved in that weakness, in that vice. Don't, never, never marry a man or a woman that tells you everybody is their mate. You don't have, they don't have, they don't need a mentor. They don't need somebody to talk to. You are an accident that is about to happen. You are a time bomb. Anybody that wants to take your life, do you know that a life partner is a life one? For the rest of your life, you're going to live with that person. It's not, it's not a, a, a thing of one-off. Marriage is not one-off. Wedlock is padlock. Please help me to write it down. Wedlock is padlock. The key is thrown to Atlantic Ocean. Only death will do you pass. Wedlock is padlock. It's only death that does you pass. It's not, it's not a casual thing. Somebody said, well, if it's not going to work, I'm going to work out. Fine. You are working out, but you are not working out. It's so simple. Let me give you a practical example of working out. Maybe you, you are divorced, you know, you sep gone your separate ways. Ten years after your divorce, death is better than divorce. Ten years after your divorce, Somebody will just see you somewhere, maybe at the mall, and ask you, Oh, good afternoon. How are you? Long time. How is... Mention the name of your husband that has gone. The wound you thought was healed will open up again. That's the pain. So why must you pray on what you can avoid? Why must you engage in a journey of shame and pain where you can quickly say, Oh boy, who is your mentor? Who is relating with you? Who can correct you and rebuke you? If that person does not have it, excuse yourself. It's better to be separated in courtship than to be separated in marriage. Never get involved in a relationship with a man or a woman that is not ready to work on himself. If you are not seeing efforts in the area of his weaknesses, and it's not intentional about it, don't be in a hurry. True love will wait for the wedding night. Don't be in a hurry. Take your time. Oh, somebody said, you don't understand. I'm late. My age. Wow, age. <laughs> you don't know how many people that are married. They walked in today at 35. They want to get out at 36. It's not up to a year. I've seen wedding. Three months, they are gone. 
two months they are gone. A week after the wedding, they are, they are beating each other. And they've wasted their parents' money. And parents, don't put pressure on your children. It's really parents that really put pressure on their children to go and get married. They are not emotionally mature. They are not sensitive. An emotionally immature parent is not a sensitive one. They are selfish. It's all about me, me, me. I told parents, if you are hearing me and you're a mother, you're a grandpa, a father, your daughter wants to get married. Instead of being pressured to, oh, we have to buy this, we have to bring this, can you pay for counseling for them? Let them pay. Listen, you are giving yourself rest for the rest of your life. If your child is not happy in a marriage, you can never be happy. That's the truth. Because when you are supposed to be resting, she's packing to your house today, she will pack out tomorrow, she will come again today, she will come again tomorrow, they will start insulting you and abusing you and telling you that you are the reason for the separation or the reason for the divorce. When you, did, you didn't force the child to go and marry a drunkard or a smoker or a humanizer, you did not. So why can't you just say, come, if you dare, you want to dare to do anything about your, this man, you are convinced that you want to marry this man. Get a counselor. Let your counselor tell you you can go ahead. If he say no, Ali, let me say something now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just remember something. Please, 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 don't involve yourself to meet a prophet to say this is the person you will marry. I don't believe in matchmaking. I will never do it like that. I'm going to do something like meeting people to marry, but not matchmaking. I'm doing an app. I'm working on it. It's, it's, a, it's a vision that I have that is coming close. I'm, it's, I'm drawing it gradually. You know what I will do? If you want to come into that platform, I would have dealt with all your baggages, where you are coming from. You would have noticed the things that are dangerous about you, your weaknesses, your personality, your addiction, everything, you would have gotten to a place of super healing, deliverance. I'm not talking about physical deliverance. Mental, emotional, psychological deliverance. You would have been complete and total before you move to the next class, to the next stage. After that, you will now meet the person. Meeting the person, it's not me that will meet the person for you. I don't believe in matchmaking. Where you meet, you relate and do everything, you come back to a class of recovery again. That's a lot of work. It's going to be in an app. I'm working on it. I'm trusting for the dynamics of it. I'm still praying about it. Because listen, if somebody tells you to go and marry someone and you start having problems, you will look for God to shoot the person. God does not match make again. After Adam, whosoever find it. Because the first fight, God, this is the wife he gave me. Ah, God said, from that day, I'm not going to impose anything on you. So don't ever go and meet one person, man of God. Pray. And because the man has just finished eating powdered jam, and you know you are very funny, I don't want to say stupid, hmm? <laughs> you, will now, you will now say that is, a, is the will of God. Some people are even terrible. Do you, I told you I've been sad all day. I've cried today. You went to a prophet to pray. And a man of God is telling you that your wife, your husband will have another wife. And that person opened his mouth to tell you. For what? You know, the, the reason why I'm so, so upset about religion I'm not a religious person. I'm a child of God. Christianity is not a religion. It's a way of life. Religion is messing things up big time. Thank you. Thank you. Religion is messing things up. It's destroying, especially the ones that are not educated, even the educated ones. When it comes to relationship, they are vulnerable, they are gullible. Now, the problem is the foundation. But spirituality should not add to the problem. Let the church be careful. Please don't let anybody tell you eh, that's your husband, that's your wife. Whosoever find it's so easy. I don't know why I'm digressing here. I'm sure there's so much pain in my soul today. I'm digressing because if this person that the father was sleeping with 
aborted for had had this truth or the mother of that girl he would have married the man to start with so everything is a web oh my god everything is a web everything is a web if you are hearing me today please don't hand over your life to one spiritual spiritualist about marriage it's only in the kingdom of god we don't respect professionals i've been using glasses since i have an optician my tooth was going one of them went i had to say dentist when i had when i got pregnant of my children i saw a gynecologist for the same body when i turned 50 i started having issues on my knees i had to say doctor before my son prophet prayed for me and now i don't have arthritis again is this same body even <laughs> Even in the in the in, in in medicine, we still have some people that handles intestine. They handle the inner part of the body. Different types of medicine. Other teeth. One part of the body. Some people are dentists by profession. That's their part to deal with the teeth. A whole doctor of teeth. And it's only here in the kingdom a pastor wants to be the prophet. To be the evangelist, to be the pastor, to be the dentist, to be the psychologist, the psychiatric, the, 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 the engineer. It's not possible. Please, let's respect each other's offices and stay in the area of your calling. And I can't blame some people. They want to have church because how would they survive if they are called to be part of the body? Fivefold ministry. Some are even there that they are into the ministry of health. Fivefold ministry. Don't, don't cancel someone that is in an abusive marriage to die there. Don't say it. Make sure you know the personality of that person. Be professional about what you are doing. It's not fair. It's not fair. It's not fair on people's lives. Don't toy with people's destiny. The terrain, the area you don't have an idea, you don't have a clue. Seek help. Get somebody else. Even in medicine, they call themselves to table and say, Oh, consultant, this... And we are going to see my consultant. This person has specialized in this particular part of you know your the body. Even in medicine, they respect each other. They invite each other to the table, they bring people's case notes and, and dialogue over it. They dialogue over people's case notes in medicine. And this is the body of Christ. God has set people in the body. We are prophets, we have evangelists, we are pastors, we are teachers, we have apostles, we have other ministry, ministry gifts. In Corinthians, and they are for the perfecting of the saints. So, if somebody would just look at you with so much potential, you are in an abusive relationship, you are being messed up, and he tells you, Stay there. I wish somebody had told you, Synergy, divorce is different from separation. Can you excuse yourself for a while? The day the man dropped her and, and made her to trek home and take Okada home, the, this same thing was said by the children. Was the day their counselor will say, Come, 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 what's going on here? And because there's no respect professionalism, and people are masking, they are covering up everything. You don't want people to say anything, you don't want people to look at you somewhere. Excuse me, look at you somehow. How it takes two to be happily married, it takes two, well, well, toxic or not toxic. We're still going to continue next week. It takes two to be married. Because when you look at the kids, I'm talking about being sex wise as parents, when you see the proceeds of these children, you will know that people have not been fair on us in the area of dealing with issues like this. People have not been fair. They have not been fair. And if people are not fair on you, you better be fair to yourself. Just look at yourself. Call your full name and tell yourself, no, I can't take this. Let me seek help. Let somebody help me out of this mess. So that I will not be scattered and shattered. And like I said, like I said, where to elephant fight? Grass does not only suffer, some grasses dies. And if you have children in a system that is not healthy, you are not matured emotionally, get professional help. You're buying this, go and get one, look for one. Try and make sure that somebody is there in your life you can vent with. And please make a commitment to listen. You can't be, you, you can't be, you can't doctor yourself yourself. If your doctor says, take this pain reliever, 
is better than this, you better obey because you must have handled at least nothing less than 20 of that case, similar cases, before it becomes a professional. Let's respect professionalism here and let's respect ourselves because listen to me, there's so much casualties out there because baby had baby, they gave back to baby, the husband is a baby, the wife is a baby and everybody is making some funny sounds in their various homes. Hmm, some people are wondering what's going on here. So many things is going on in my head. You know, because of the kind of work I do, I listen to some things and I'm, I'm saying, excuse me, God help me. I was telling one lady today, I said, I can't even share your problem. I can't say what you told me about your life. I can't say it in public. I can't. It's going to sound as if I'm, 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 I'm making up stories. Come and listen to voice notes voices of women and men that are terribly in pain because they were they were raised by parents that are not mature listen to me it's not compulsory for you to bring a child to this world honestly it's not compulsory it's not you can as well stay and just be sure you are ready to be married before you go into marriage relationship it's been to me it's been emotional today it's been stressful because of what I've heard in the course of the day and it has really put me on edge and that's why I'm talking like this so please if I'm a little bit hard I apologize but the truth has to be said you know you call a spade a spade you don't call it an agricultural shovel you let people realize this thing my DM is DM please okay, it's well. you can DM me on. that's my, my handle you can DM me it's very, very bad. How can you have your daughter got her pregnant and voted for her? Gave her HIV as I'm talking to you. Thank you. <laughs> I said I've cried today. She said, Mommy, so where do I go from here? Where do I go from here? And this girl was, it was her father that disvagined her. I've, I've made you to listen to some voice notes but sometimes when I talk like this people think, oh she's making up stories no she's make, I'm not making up stories, I don't have to I'm privileged to have insight to people's life, people trust me with their lives so definitely, I don't have to you know. one lady sent me a DM yesterday <laughs> after the program what was the program I did yesterday I'm even having brain block already, imagine Toxic or not toxic? Say, mommy, what do I do? Where do I go from here? I'm positive now. I don't want to leave. You know how many times I've attempted suicide? It's just because we said something yesterday. That was why I sent you a mail. A lot of things. She sent text. She sent voice notes. It's not fair. Please don't bring children to this world. If you are not ready to be matured. If you are not married yet. And before you say I do, do counseling. In the multitude of counseling, there is safety. With a good counsel, you can make a war. You can go to war with a good counsel. Don't be too big than your counselor. You are privileged in this, your own life. To have somebody that your husband listens to and your wife listens to, that person should be worshipped for the rest of your days on earth. You know that this person... If, if my husband if my husband does better and this person says no is no that person is a god to you because you know how many people out there that no man can talk to them no woman can address them they are god by themselves they are principalities and powers by themselves don't marry a man like that and if you have one that your husband respect please keep that relationship service it is very important it's for your own good Hmm, I need to go. I just have to go. Is there any question? Any question? Yes, ma. Marriage is not marriage is not draining. Bad marriage is draining. Marriage is a beautiful thing. My parents had a beautiful Yes, now that's what we're saying. I didn't say marriage is draining. When you don't know what to do, it becomes chaotic. It becomes a casualty. It's the truth. Do you know the values your parents had when you were growing up? These people were godly. There was commitment. There's no secret. There's so many ingredients. It's like cooking a meal. Marriage is not cheap. Good marriages are not found on the street. Ask your parents. They worked on their marriage. 
they worked on it. Good marriage is hard work. And the two of them has to be intentional. Marriage is not 50-50, it's 100-100. Please, 100-100. Please help me to write it down. Marriage is not 50-50, everybody puts effort. You can't have a man that is committing adultery and you're going to stay there. You will stay there because of the children, but you are not soulmates. Because the spirit of jealousy is up. You can't trust him with your health. You can't trust him. When, you know, I, I said something about trust. I'm sitting on a chair now you know, in the studio where I'm recording. If, if, I, if the, this chair is bought in the best furniture shop in the world, and it was flown to my house to sit on it, and it thank you, and it falls me down. For me to, and, you say, and the, the, the factory say, no, we're sorry. We're really sorry. Why is it that you, you have fallen? Oh, this is not nice. We, we're going to return it. We're going to pay back, blah, blah, blah. And they bought a ticket for the chair. I'm giving you an example of trust. Because people need to understand what they are saying when they are talking. Now, they flew this chair back to Germany or wherever they got it from. And they flew it back. For me to sit on this chair again, I, I would check because he had fallen me before. So marriage is built on trust. It's 100, 100, not 50, 50. Play your part, love your spouse, care for your spouse, be transparent, no side cheeks, no adultery, no infidelity, no lying, no stealing, nothing. Trust is there. You know where he is, you know where she is, you know his friends, you know her friends. Is not having any side, anything, no secret anywhere. You are safe. Who wants to relate with a man or a woman that you cannot be safe with? The person, forget it. The person will want to leave his or her life. Privately. The day you violate trust in your marriage is the beginning of trouble. Quickly seek help. Seek professional help. The day your husband or your wife knows that he's not the only one in your life, that is finished. You need help. You need therapy. You need counseling to restore trust and build back trust in that relationship. Trust has to be restored for you to move on. I've written a book on infidelity or something. Infidelity way out. There's no problem in having a fling. There's no problem in making mistakes. There's no problem in error. Maybe you commit adultery or something happened. But listen, you can't sweep it under the carpet. You can't tell your wife, I forgive you. You are forgiving me. You don't forgive. You don't let go. Who says? When the woman can count 200 women in how many years of marriage? She doesn't. She wouldn't want to die. She doesn't want to die. She will have to look for a way to, to jettison. She might be there under the same roof. You still wear uniform out to go to parties together. But you too, you know that you are not connected soulishly. And it will affect everything. Your health, your wealth, your happiness. If you are not careful, if you are hearing me now, if you are not careful, please, don't let it affect your children. If you don't make it with your hands, you can make it through your children. Whatever you have to do, just let one person that is sane be upright and be stout for your children. I'm choosing my words. Be stout for your children. Please. Be stout for your children. Stand up for them. Two of you cannot be committing adultery at the same time. You're going to mess things up. Your life will become a paradox to your children. You will confuse them. You can't do that. So please, find a way to maintain yourself, maintain your status financially and all of that. But adultery, no, no, no. If one person has done it, don't join him to do it. Don't join her to do it. Let somebody be safe and we're going to have rest. Once again, I'd say thank you. Somebody said someone, something, somebody asked me a question. How do you know is the right man to marry? Mm. That's a topic for a day. How do you know? I don't know your religion. I don't know what you believe in. If you're a Christian, you're a born again Christian. You have the word of God to lead you. You have your inner convictions there. Sometimes confirmation from people that you look up to. But what is most important is, if you don't know how to hear the voice of God over little, little things. For instance, if God says, this is your month's salary, give it to your pastor. Now that's touching, right? 
and we are living in a world that pastors have been insulted and you know, treated like trash. I'm just using that as an inference. That was why I used something that is a little bit high. And then you said, yes, no, and you dropped your whole month's salary. How you are going to survive that month? You don't want to be bothered because you know you heard the voice of God. If God can lead you, okay, let me pick another one. Sweep the church today for the next one week. Before service, you must come and sweep and clean and mop the church floor. And you say, yes, Lord. Okay, Lord, I'll do that. If God can lead you over little, little things and you respond to him, he will lead you. It will be a problem hearing the voice of God when it comes to marital choice. It will not be a problem because you are used to it. If my friend calls me now, I will know it's my friend's voice. I know my friend's voice. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, the voice of a stranger, they will not obey. So you have to learn how to hear the voice of God, to know the right person to marry. Then if something is telling you on the inside of you, you are not compatible, you have frictions, you fight, there's a lot of misunderstanding. Or if the person is a narcissist, he will not have misunderstanding with you. He will help you to overlook your weaknesses and rationalize for you until you enter the trap. I think I will talk about narcissism one of these days. We are not in a hurry, except rapture comes. And I don't think Jesus is coming now. If he comes, better still, we'll go with the first flight. If you are not going with the first flight here today, you better go and give your life to Jesus. It's very simple. Tell Jesus you are sorry. He should forgive you of your sins. Invite him officially to your heart. Then DM me, I can pray with you. I will be glad to do that. Thank you once again for listening. I have been able to answer that question. It's broader than that, but I don't want to go outside the time. I'm almost outside my scheduled time of program. Once again, thank you so much for listening to me. Appreciate you so dearly. I'll see you again next week. Thank you.